This video is Membrane Proteins 5. So this video talks about a couple different surface coatings that are really key for particular cellular functions, and one of these is the glycocalyx. So the glycocalyx is a carbohydrate layer on the outside of the cell membrane Sometimes this is called a sugar coating, not like for candy, but in particular this refers to the prefix glyco, glyco referring to a sweet or sugar, so some sort of saccharide, and that this is outside the cell. The purpose of the glycocalyx is to protect the cell. For example, from mechanical damage, can and it also can adsorb water, which produces a slimy surface. And this is particularly helpful for modal cells, such as white, white blood cells. One of the roles of the white blood cells is to uh, be a protectorate and respond to immune um, the immune stimulation, and so white blood cells sometimes have to squeeze through really narrow spaces, and so they can actually use the glycocalyx as a way to um, kind of lubricate that. The glycocalyx itself is shown in this figure, and so basically all this stuff up here um, contributes to the carbohydrate layer. There's a couple types in particular that are really relevant for us. Um, there's definitely more to it than I'm going to go into, but there are these glycoproteins, which could either be transmembrane or adsorbed. Glycoproteins, again, this is a protein that is covalently linked to a short chain of sugars. Basically, those are these little blue kind of almost stop sign looking things. Each of those is a sugar molecule. And so then they're attached at one or multiple locations uh, to these green protein blobs. A second part of the glycocalyx is the proteoglycans. Which kind of sound like the same thing as glycoproteins, just inverting uh, those uh, parts of the word. Uh, but proteoglycans have one or more long polysaccharide chain. And that are, is bonded to the protein. The other application I want to talk about regarding carbohydrates in function uh, for cells is this really cool example. This is also looking at a white blood cell and basically this details how a white blood cell, which is a type of immune cell, can leave the bloodstream and then skirt through the cells of the blood vessel and find the exact location of an infection. So basically this is an example
of how carbohydrates are used in organismal function. And specifically, we're looking at how a white blood cell leaves the bloodstream to target infected tissue. And so here's uh, the figure. Basically, what we're seeing here is a cross-section of a blood vessel. You can see many cells that line the blood, cell, the blood vessel, and they're pretty tightly connected to one another. These are called endothelial cells, and basically there are little spots where sometimes cells can sneak through, but they need some special cues to be able to do that. And so an example here is that we've got a white blood cell, also known as a neutrophil. Um, this is a cell that's rolling along through the blood vessel, and it will start to roll along the inside of the blood vessel. The way it does that is that there's particular protein-carbohydrate uh, interaction. The really key part of this is lectins. So lectins, these are transmembrane proteins. which bind to particular oligosaccharides, so short sugar, sugar chains, from glycoproteins um, and or glycolipids. And what we've really focused on so far is to talk about glycoproteins. But basically, lectin is this little green protein here. These um, lectins are found on the endothelial cells. And then these oligosaccharides are on the white blood cells, which are um, shown here as neutrophils. And so basically, this white blood cell rolls along here. If it encounters lectin, uh, lectins, um, which match that oligosaccharide, then they make a um, kind of a protein-carbohydrate interaction, so temporary interaction. And so this kind of holds this in place, and then uh, this white blood cell can kind of flatten against the blood vessel wall, and then it can change shape, because these are pretty kind of slimy cells, um, and then it can sneak in between these little cracks um, in the endothelial cells, so um, right here. And then this means that those white blood cells um, which are immune cells, can go find the site of infection and start to fight off whatever that infection might be. So this is a really key part um, to allow those white blood cells to be moving through the whole body um, and then to be able to find a particular location and then sneak in. There's a couple of really great ways to see this in action, and one of those is to check out movie 11.7 which is a microscopy, which I just think is astounding, of these white blood cells um, rolling along the blood vessels and then entering um, into deeper tissue. Um, and so this is the Albert's textbook link. So if you want to go check that out now, I'll just take like a, you know, 30 seconds or so and basically navigate to chapter 11 and then to movie 7 and you'll get to see some really cool microscopy showing this process in action. Um, another way you could check this out in more detail is through the inner life of the cell. If you Google that, and then uh, just watch the beginning of it, maybe the first 30 seconds or so, uh, they'll show the white blood cell um, rolling along, and it's pretty pretty awesome. So that is a kind of stylized appreciation, whereas the movie from the textbook shows you the actual microscopy.